Hey everyone, and welcome. In this guide, you're going to learn the best mouse sensitivity to start being more accurate and getting more kills in Valorant. We've spent the time to research every single pro player in Valorant to find what the best, most optimal mouse settings are to give you a competitive edge. Not only that, but we'll be breaking down eDPI, DPI, mouse sensitivity, polling rate, scoped sensitivity multiplier, and so much more. There are even hidden window settings that you may have enabled that are holding you back. We've even gone the extra mile and found the most common mouse pads and mice players are using to get that laser-like accuracy. We truly put a ton of work into this guide to make sure all the information you're about to receive is the most accurate and up-to-date possible. And if you want to get more premium guides like this one with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player, then make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and like the video. Alright, enough hype, let's jump straight into it. First things first, none of what you're about to learn will mean anything if you don't understand the difference between DPI, eDPI, and in-game sensitivity. So let's start with DPI, which stands for dots per inch, and is essentially just a measurement of how sensitive a mouse is. I know, that's a bit disappointing, right? Well, years of marketing hype around gaming mice has caused DPI to sound more important and more complicated than it actually is. So essentially, forget that marketing hype, think of the DPI of your mouse as just another way to change the mouse sensitivity. By the way, if you're confused about what DPI your mouse is, then nearly every gaming mouse brand comes with its own app to adjust your mouse DPI. For example, Logitech has the Logitech G-Hub, Razer has Razer Synapse, SteelSeries has the SteelSeries Engine, you get the idea. Simply download your mouse brand's app center and you'll be able to detect what DPI your mouse is, as well as adjust it. So here's where DPI becomes a problem though. You know what else changes your mouse sensitivity? The in-game sensitivity option in Valorant. So what this means is that you have two ways of changing your sensitivity. You can adjust your mouse's DPI or the in-game sensitivity. This makes it extremely difficult to know how sensitive someone's mouse actually is. For example, the Valorant pro player Shazam has a DPI of 400 and in-game sensitivity of 0.530. Compare this to the Valorant Pro 10s that has a DPI of 800 and in-game sensitivity of 0.485. How is someone supposed to tell what their true sensitivity is or who has a higher or lower sensitivity? This is where eDPI comes in, which stands for effective dots per inch. eDPI represents a player's true sensitivity and is simply calculated by multiplying the mouse DPI with the in-game sensitivity. So let's take a look at the eDPI of the previous two pros. Shazam has an eDPI of 212, while Tens has an eDPI of 388. Suddenly, not only can we see that Shazam has the lower sensitivity of the two, but we can also compare our own sensitivity to both of these pros. Try it out right now. Take your current mouse DPI, multiply it by your in-game sensitivity in Valorant, and post your eDPI in the comments section below. By the end of this video, you'll be able to see whether this number is horribly suboptimal or whether you've been playing with a sensitivity close to the pros this whole time. In conclusion, don't worry about your DPI or in-game sensitivity. All that matters is your effective DPI, or eDPI for short, as this represents your mouse's true sensitivity. Alright, now that you understand the difference between these three settings and have calculated your own eDPI, we can start to optimize it. What you first need to understand when it comes to aiming in a tactical shooter like Valorant is that you play at a much lower sensitivity than other FPS games. In games like Apex Legends, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Overwatch, there's often a lot of open space and action going on where it can be common for you to have to make large mouse adjustments. However, in Valorant this is rarely the case. The maps are closed in and you'll be using tactics like pre-aiming your crosshair, exposing yourself to one angle at a time. These things will make the likelihood of having to land a crazy 180 degree flick shot highly unlikely. Instead, you're making much smaller incremental changes to your crosshair when you aim, and so it's best to use lower sensitivity to give you more fine-tuned control. This is exactly why the average eDPI for Valorant Pros is 278. When you convert the eDPI of pros from other games to Valorant pros, you see just how much lower of a sensitivity this truly is. For example, the average Overwatch pro would have an eDPI of around 450 in Valorant. The same for an Apex Legends pro, they would have an average eDPI of around 450. The average Call of Duty pro comes in lower with an eDPI of 350, but you get the idea. Almost every single other FPS game requires a higher sensitivity than Valorant. This means that a lot of players are not aware of the need to lower their mouse sensitivity in tactical shooters like Valorant and Counter-Strike. 
All right, so how can you start to optimize your mouse sensitivity to start aiming better in Valorant? You should start by doing the tried and true method of the 180 degree mouse pad trick. Hop into practice mode in Valorant. Move your mouse so that it's on the leftmost edge of your mouse pad while staring directly in front of you. Then move your mouse all the way to the right edge of your mouse pad. This should do a 180 degree turn and have you staring directly behind you. For most of you out there, this probably didn't happen and you did a complete turn or even more. You want to keep lowering your in-game sensitivity until moving your mouse from the leftmost edge to the rightmost edge does a 180 degree turn. Depending on your mouse pad size, this should put you near 250 eDPI. The reason why this is a good base sensitivity to work from is that any lower sensitivity than this and you won't be able to do a 180 degree turn and kill an opponent behind you. So from here, you can start raising your sensitivity until it's more comfortable. Just make sure to never raise it so high that you can do more than a 360 degree turn by moving your mouse from the leftmost edge of your mouse pad to the right edge, as this means you've gone too far and your sensitivity is too high. These two benchmarks, the 180 degree turn and 360 degree turn, essentially represent 250 to 500 eDPI in Valorant and falling somewhere in between these two numbers is a great starting point, so use this method to find what's most comfortable for you. Now, if you're someone coming from a different FPS game and you just want the same sensitivity across all games, then you're in luck as you can simply convert your previous sensitivity to Valorant using this easy chart. However, we don't recommend this as we mentioned earlier, Valorant is unique compared to other FPS games in that its optimal sensitivity is much lower. Still, your mouse sensitivity will come down to a certain degree of personal preference. It's not like every single pro player has the exact same sensitivity. Instead, it's much better to think of making sure your eDPI is within a certain range. Let's show you exactly what we mean by this. When it comes to Valorant Pros, we know the average eDPI is 278. However, there are players on both extreme ends of the spectrum. For example, the pro player Brax, who is widely considered to be one of the best aimers in the world, has the lowest eDPI of every single pro, coming in at 141. That's essentially half as sensitive as the average pro. On the other end, we have the pro player Hiko, again, a super accomplished career in the CSGO pro scene and is widely considered to be one of the best Valorant pro players right now. Well, he actually has the highest eDPI of all pros, coming in at 576. So what does all this mean? Well, if your eDPI is below 141 or above 576, you're probably doing something wrong and should make some adjustments as these are the most extreme ends of the range. At the same time, don't get too tunnel visioned on the number for the average eDPI for pros, 278. This is just something to aim for. For example, let's take a look at some of the best and most popular pro players right now in Valorant. Shazam has an eDPI of 212. Wardell has an eDPI of 260, Mixwell has an eDPI of 276, Asu has an eDPI of 376, okay, we're starting to get higher now, Sinatra has an eDPI of 384, and Tens has an eDPI of 388. As you can see, it's not like every single pro goes with the exact same sensitivity, instead, they operate within a certain range. This is why we recommend your eDPI should be within 200 to 400 any lower or higher, and you're most likely doing yourself more harm than good. At the same time, don't expect yourself to instantly become better the second you change your sensitivity. It will take time for your body to adjust, and it's not uncommon for you to actually be a worse aimer for the first week or two. For example, if you had an eDPI of 800, and you decide to drop it down to 200, well, expect to have to put in some time in practice mode, retraining your aim. Simultaneously, when changing your sensitivity, try to go with whatever part of the range is closest to your previous sensitivity. So in the previous example of someone with an eDPI of 800, it's better if you change it to the higher end of the range, 400, than trying to drop it down to the low end of 200. And lastly, don't change your sensitivity. Sure, go into practice mode and try to find an eDPI within that 200 to 400 range that you find comfortable, but once you've picked one, stick with it for at least a few weeks so your body can adjust. Then, once enough time has passed, you can look to make more minor adjustments up or down within that range to dial in on what works best for you. Alright, you should now have everything you need to find your best mouse sensitivity to start giving you laser-like accuracy. However, there's still even more optimizations you can make to help you get more kills. For example, a ton of players actually have something called mouse acceleration enabled in Windows, which is a huge mistake and something no pro player would ever use. What mouse acceleration does is change the rate at which your mouse pointer moves based on the speed you're moving your mouse. 
This harms your accuracy when playing games since it's difficult to build the proper muscle memory if your mouse's sensitivity is constantly changing based on the speed in which you're moving your mouse. To check if you have this setting enabled, type mouse settings in the window search bar. Then click additional mouse options, then click pointer options, and make sure enhanced pointer precision is turned off as this is mouse acceleration. Additionally, see the pointer speed bar above it. If you count the notches, it goes up to 11. You should have it set to the sixth notch. This will influence your mouse's sensitivity and it's best to keep this on six, which is the default, so that when you calculate your eDPI, it's actually accurate. Another setting you should be aware of is the polling rate of your mouse. A mouse's polling rate determines how often it reports its position to your computer. For example, if a mouse has a 125 hertz polling rate, then it reports its position to the computer 125 times every second. In theory, a higher polling rate can decrease the lag that occurs between when you move your mouse and when the movement shows up on your screen. 84% of Valorant pros have their mouse set to a polling rate of 1000 hertz while 16% have it set to a polling rate of 500 hertz. You can adjust your mouse's polling rate by your mouse brand software. For example, Logitech has the Logitech G Hub. Increasing this to 1000 seems to be the most optimal choice since it reduces input lag. However, that doesn't explain why 16% of pros have this set to 500. Well, this has to do with two things. First, 500 hertz is typically the default setting that comes with the mouse. So a lot of pros wouldn't have gone in their settings to turn it up to 1000. And you can imagine, after turning pro, they probably don't want to mess around with their polling rate if it's already working for them. You know the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The second reason is that a lot of the pros that play with a polling rate of 500Hz are older Counter-Strike pros that come from a time when 1000Hz simply wasn't the standard. Again, if you've been playing your whole professional life with certain settings that work for you, then you probably wouldn't want to start changing things around and instead stick with what's been working. Overall though, your best bet is to go with 1000 hertz polling rate as it will give you the least input lag and it's what the vast majority of pro players are using. Next, we have the scoped sensitivity multiplier. This will adjust the sensitivity of your mouse when you aim down sight on a rifle or down a scope on a sniper. 75% of pros have this set to one, which means their scope sensitivity is the same as their unscoped sensitivity. This is definitely what we'd recommend you keep since trying to keep your sensitivity the same will help build muscle memory. That being said, it's worth noting that even when pros change the setting, they aren't going too crazy with it. For example, Shazam has a scoped sensitivity multiplier of 0.9, and the Pro Player 10s has a scoped sensitivity multiplier of 0.875. Overall, you should keep the setting at 1, but if you find that it doesn't feel right, you can change it, but try to keep within 10% of its base value, so don't drop below 0.9 or above 1.1. Lastly, let's talk about what kind of hardware these pros are using, as the kind of mouse or mousepad you own can actually impact what kind of sensitivity you want. Now, as unconventional as this may sound, we would argue that your mousepad is actually more important than your mouse. Let me explain. Due to Valorant having a low optimal sensitivity, it means you want to have more mousepad space. This is a problem that other FPS players might not be used to having. We've taken the time to research what mousepads the pros are using, and there are actually two that are by far the most popular. The first is the Zowie GSR. This is a cloth mat that is 390 millimeters by 470 or 15.3 inches by 18.5. It also has a thickness of 3.5 millimeters. The second is the Logitech G640. Again, this is a cloth mat and it has the dimensions of 400 millimeters by 460 or 15.7 inches by 18.1. And it has a thickness of three millimeters. So forget about all these brands. Here's what really matters. Firstly, the width of your mousepad is so important. Without enough room, you won't be able to utilize the optimal low sensitivity for Valorant. Get a tape measure and measure the width of your mousepad. If it's below 18 inches or 457 millimeters, then we would highly recommend you consider purchasing one of the above mousepads. Also, realize that it's perfectly fine to have a mousepad whose width is wider than this 18 inch benchmark. For example, a ton of pros use extra large mousepads that they can put their keyboard on. The important thing to take away from this is that you're not below this 18 inch benchmark as you'll run into the issue of not having enough room to utilize a low sensitivity. The second thing to be aware of is that pretty much every single pro uses a cloth mat. Compare this to harder mouse pad alternatives that allow your mouse to glide and move much faster. It's generally accepted that a cloth mat gives you more control over your aim. At the same time, you have to realize all of these eDPI calculations we went over, well, if you're using a hard mat, then it's effectively making you have a higher sensitivity since your mouse will move faster. 
This means you may want to consider going with a lower eDPI to compensate for this fact. Now, when it comes to the actual mouse pros are using, without a doubt, the most popular right now is the Logitech G Pro Wireless. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's one of the most expensive mice on the market. However, even I recently made the switch to it and have nothing but good things to say about it. Still, everyone holds a mouse differently and has different sized hands. This can impact what mouse feels right for them, so don't fall too much for the hype. A mouse can be a completely subjective choice, just try to find one that you like. What's really important is understanding how your mouse's weight can impact your mouse's sensitivity. For example, the Logitech G Pro Wireless has a weight of 80 grams. This is definitely on the lighter end and is one of its main selling points. In general, there has been a trend amongst pro players of using lighter mice, as the idea is that the lighter the mouse, the easier it is to make micro adjustments. However, you have to realize that just like how a mouse pad with a hard surface indirectly makes your mouse have a higher sensitivity, the same applies to a mouse's weight. Using a lighter mouse often results in a lower sensitivity since it's easier to make larger movements with it. Using a heavier mouse often results in a higher sensitivity since it's more difficult to make larger movements. For example, another common mouse pros use is the Logitech G703. This is also a wireless mouse, however it's 27 grams heavier than the G Pro Wireless. This heavier mouse is going to make it feel like you have a lower sensitivity. Someone with an eDPI of 300 using the G703 will feel like they have a lower sensitivity than if they were using a G Pro Wireless. So just take these things into consideration when comparing your eDPI with the pros. If you're using a heavier mouse, you'll probably lean towards the higher end of the 200 to 400 eDPI range. Whereas if you're using a lighter mouse, you'll probably lean towards the lower end. All right, that just about covers everything you need to know to set up the best mouse sensitivity for Valorant. We here at Skillcapped put a ton of work into this guide, and if you want to show your support and get more premium guides like this one, then make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and like the video. And definitely post your old eDPI in the comment section below, as we're super curious to see what sensitivity the average player has been using compared to the pros. Thanks for watching, best of luck out there in your ranked games, and we'll catch you in the next one.